treatment that potentially could save a life. But officials say you'd be surprised by the number of residents who don't have an active smoke alarm. Research shows that almost a quarter million people in the city of Los Angeles do not have working smoke alarms in their homes. And it's so important to get into those homes and find out what they need. And that's why Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez and officials from the Los Angeles Fire Department and My Safe LA, an organization promoting fire and life safety, are emphasizing the importance of public safety. We are going door to door and block by block to start connecting with our residents to make sure that they're aware of all of the services that we are here to provide and making sure that they are safe in the face of a number of the emergencies that we could be confronted with. Since 2014, MySafe LA has installed more than 35,000 smoke alarms in homes all over the city of LA. That has led to a 40% reduction in residential fire fatalities. Ten years leading up to 2014, on average 21 people a year died in fires in Los Angeles. And during the last four years, we've seen that come down to 12. And that's uh, a really terrific step. We'd like to see it down to eight a year and then down to zero at some point in time. So the message here, make sure your smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors are working. We all know what happened in the Creek Fire. We know what happened in the Tuna Fire. Those were tragic to our community, but I still believe the emergency preparedness that all these partners demonstrated facilitated greater public safety. And it all begins in your home. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Fighting, fists of fury, join forces in support of traditional Chinese martial arts. Gil Reyes tells us why from LA's Chinatown. You could say they're fighting to keep an ancient art form relevant. Sifu master, grandmasters of at least 40 different styles. And uh, it's just an absolute miracle for all these uh, fighters to be in the same room so peacefully. They're actually fighting together to keep Kung Fu alive and kicking and punching in Southern California. This dinner in LA's Chinatown awards pioneers in the Chinese martial arts community and raises money to help keep their schools operating. That's the mission of the traditional Chinese Martial Arts Federation of Los Angeles, the group formed last year. In the spirit of a friendship, uh, the unity, and the uh, respect. That's our mission statement. Well, the events like this is helping to hold us together. The MMA became very popular. We need something to help our survival. Because what's happening right now, we're getting overcome by some of the sport arts, uh, some of the wushu arts even out of China. and. What we're trying to do is carry the ancient art. Not just for self-defense, but for good, heart-pumping exercise, too. L.A. City Councilman David Rue says he's trained. The entire city council and the mayor joined in your celebration, and we hope this event only gets larger and larger every single year. Keeping the fighting spirit alive in L.A.'s Chinatown. I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. And that was the Federation's second annual fundraiser. More money is coming in to help fix our roads. Some middle school kids make school safety a priority, and a local park gets some much needed upgrades thanks to the community. All this in City Beat. Mayor Eric Garcetti gathered with transportation leaders at Union Station to highlight more than $1.2 billion in funds awarded to Southern California transportation projects. The funds will go towards repairing California's crumbling transportation infrastructure. Funding will support highway and road maintenance, increased public transit, and construction of local priority transportation projects. I want to see my daughter. I want to see my wife. I don't want to be stuck in traffic. All of us have a place to be, and we're driving over pothole roads, crumbling bridges. We don't have enough transit options. SB1 shows a way forward. In collaboration with State Farm, the mayor's Vision Zero, and Los Angeles Unified School District, Los Angeles Rams punter Johnny Hecker and Rams cheerleaders surprised students at Columbus Middle School to announce the school as the winner of the Street Safety Hero Pledge Contest after its students submitted the highest share, 86%, of pledges to be street safety heroes as part of the Safe Routes to School program. Students take the pledge to be a safe pedestrian and remind family and friends who drive to be aware of people walking and biking on our streets. 
Councilman Jose Huizar and community members gathered to unveil $700,000 worth of improvements to San Pasqual Park. Community suggested improvements include a new playground, outdoor fitness area, a basketball court, ADA walkways, and a refurbished parking lot. Phase two of the project will add new restrooms. Council Member Huizar's office held five community meetings with the San Pasqual Neighborhood Watch to discuss park safety and instituted the improvements to make the space more active. It only happened because the community is active, involved, and engaged. The summer vacation season began with a patriotic salute to fallen service members. Gil Reyes has more from Memorial Day commemorations on the east side and in Canoga Park. Within L.A. City, few communities have as much small-town flavor as Canoga Park. And it's here in Canoga Park where a wreath dedication for fallen service members takes place every Memorial Day. It's a very patriotic uh, part of Los Angeles, part of this country, and you'll see it. You'll see it in people lining the streets and cheering on uh, you know, all the floats that go by. What follows is Canoga Park's Memorial Day Parade. Service members, flag wavers, and local leaders make their way down Sherman Way for the biggest Memorial Day procession in California. Tens of thousands come to honor military men and women who died while serving. Because a lot of them are forgotten. A lot of people were forgotten and still are forgotten. Because they gave up their life to give us freedom. And I think that's an awesome thing. It's also an opportunity to say thank you to those who are alive, who are veterans, who need our help, so many of which are living on the streets of Los Angeles. And we have an obligation in the memory of all those who have fallen to make sure that we take care of all of our vets. Over on LA's east side, people honor the dead at El Sereno Memorial Monument. For decades, Northeast LA has sent many of its young residents to war. Many of them did not make it home. For Northeast Councilman and first-generation American Jose Huizar, it's a time to honor those who died for freedoms many of us take for granted. Not all people in the world can have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, uh, freedom to congregate, and uh, freedoms to march and protest against our own government. Uh, and the opportunities uh, that we have in this country are tremendous. Things to remember while enjoying summer vacation with friends and family. I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Other commemorations took place at the L.A. National Cemetery in Westwood, the World War II Memorial in Boyle Heights, Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood, and at the L.A. Coliseum. We'll join Councilmember Paul Krikorian for a hike and get a free tree, get inspired with a tour of some ranch-style homes from the 40s, and come out for a block party and go home with a new four-legged family member. All this in this week's Things to Do. Nature is calling. Join Council Member Paul Krikorian, Assembly Member Nazarian, and Tree People for a Saturday morning hike in beautiful Coldwater Canyon Park. The first 50 people who show up will also get a free tree. It all takes place Saturday, June 9th at 9 a.m. at Coldwater Canyon Park, located at 12601 Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills. To RSVP, visit paulkrikorian.org slash treepeoplehike. Author Chris LeCather will take attendees on a stroll in Valley Glen of a cluster of special ranch-style homes built by William Melanthin in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. His singular brand of cozy, charming homes, which became known as the Melanthin Birdhouse Ranch Home, so-called because they featured a cupola or dovecote built prominently into the roof. As a special treat, one of the homeowners will open up their home for a tour. Light snacks and beverages will be offered. Water will be provided to all attendees. Make sure to wear walking shoes, sunscreen, and bring a hat in case it's hot. The tour takes place Saturday, June 9th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at the corner of Addison and Ethel in Sherman Oaks. Whether you have two legs or four furry ones, this promises to be fun for all at the second annual Glacelle Bark Community Block Party and Pet Rescue Adoption, sponsored in part by CD1 Council Member Gil Cedillo. There will be plenty of fun family festivities, including a watermelon eating contest, free professional family pet photos, free microchipping, free spay-neuter vouchers, low-cost vaccines, a doggy fashion show, human barking contests, live performances, and more. 
You can also enjoy live entertainment, local vendors, and food trucks. The block party takes place Saturday, June 9th from 12 to 3 p.m. at Glassell Park, located at 3750 Verdugo Road. For more, visit glasselbark.com. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. the stupid hat. Come here. Closer. No parking! Do you know what happens when you park illegally on these narrow hillside streets? You block the street so emergency vehicles can't pass. Each year, homes are destroyed and lives are lost because of drivers like you who park illegally. And you know what else? You can get a citation. And you can be towed! Help us get to the emergency. The life we save just might be yours. How'd you know? The ball called. <laughs> hey, look out for the pothole. Birthdays, baby showers, graduations, or anniversaries. Holidays like Cinco de Mayo, there are lots of fun excuses to throw a big party. But what do you do with all the stuff once the guests have gone home? Well, as long as they're clean and dry, you can recycle aluminum cans. Items like candy wrappers cannot be recycled. They need to go in your black bin. Party decorations? Well, consider reusing them. Pizza, donut, boxes, and other pastry boxes can be recycled only if they're clean. If they are dirty and greasy, please throw them in your black bin. For more information, visit Recicla.com. <laughs> this is Korea Town. My name is Hwang Bae Kim. You watch LA City View, Channel 35. Our, our city, our, our channel. channel.
Welcome to Los Angeles City Council. Today is Friday. Appreciate you all being here, so welcome this morning as well. Um, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Weizar, Coretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 11 members, President and Quorum, Mr. President. Great. We welcome Joe Buscaino is here as well. We can add him to the, to the board. Thank you very much, colleagues. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into the first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Blumenfeld moves. Mr. Bonin seconds. Next items, please. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Wesson moves. Mr. Rue seconds. Thank you very much. Next items, please. Mr. President, there is a request to continue item 15 to June 19th. And also for the record, the applicant and the appellant agreed to, con um, to extend the time limit for item number 15 to June 19th, 2018, sir. Okay, then that'll be the order without objection. Thank you very much. Next items, please. Item number one is an item notice for public hearing. Mr. President, there are cards on this. Okay, item. we'll go ahead and hold it for cards. Thank you. Items two through 12 are items for which public hearings have been held. The committee report for item nine has been submitted, posted, and circulated for council's consideration. And Mr. President, there is a request to hold item number nine. Okay, then, uh, then that'll be the order. We'll go ahead and uh, open up the remaining items. Colleagues, do we have any specials on those items? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the roll on those items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. They're approved. I also have a request from the mayor's office to move item four, fourth wish. So that'll be the order without objection. Which one's more urgent? Uh, we're not here yet. Okay, next items, please. Mr. President, items 13 and 14 are items for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the roll for consideration on 13 and 14. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. Those are before us. Do we have cards? Cards on both. We'll go ahead and hold those for cards on both. Next items, please. That brings council to presentations, items called special or uh, general public comments. Sir. We'll go ahead and uh, let's go into presentations. Actually, um, do we have, what do we have? Okay, we'll go ahead and go into presentations. And if I can ask Councilwoman Mary Martinez to please come up. Good morning, Mr. Englander. Good morning. Fantastic. Colleagues, this is a man that needs no introduction, but I will do so anyway. You know, um, many of us are dealing with one of the biggest, we're all dealing with, the biggest issue we face in our communities. We're dealing with the biggest moral dilemma of our lifetime. What we're dealing with our families, individuals who are chronically homeless, who are living on the streets, those who are newly homeless, homeless for so many different reasons. And we rely on our community partners more so than ever. We cannot, and we say this often, do this alone, but Wade Trimmer is the proof that we can't do it alone. He's the success behind achievement. In fact, many of the programs and the services and the housing models that we're looking to build, that we're looking to bring online, that we're trying to create, that the voters have passed, Wade's been doing. He hasn't been doing it alone, but he's been doing it. Uh, in fact, I call Wade Trimmer the Phoenix because it was out of the ashes that he really made a name for himself here in Los Angeles and was recognized. Because if you can imagine this, 
Imagine you've lost everything. Imagine you are living in a shelter with your children and nothing more, Mr. Cedillo, than the shoes on your feet, Mr. Blumenfield, than the shirt on your back, Ms. Rodriguez, and the blanket that was lent to you to keep your children warm for one night. And then imagine in the middle of the night, there's a fire, and the shelter, the last bit of hope, burns to the ground. Not only were you homeless, but you're now newly homeless again from a fire. In fact, many of these families ran out of the shelter with not even the shoes on their feet. I got a call from Wade, May of 2014, and his team. The next day, I found out that morning, in the wee hours, that they lost their shelter, that there was a fire. They needed shoes, toiletries, everything. They had nothing. I'll never forget the phone call, in fact, that I made to Walmart. And I called up in the morning and I said, I need to speak with a manager. And they said, there's no manager on duty. We just opened the store. I said, well, I need to speak with whoever's in charge. They said, okay, we have an assistant manager. And they got the assistant manager on the phone. And I said, I'm Council Member Mitchell Englander. We just had a fire and a, a homeless shelter burnt to the ground. We need shoes, clothing, toiletries. I need it all donated. I need it right now. And they said, okay, okay, slow down. Just have one quick question for you. I said, okay. She says to me on the phone, what's a council member? So I said, all right, this is going to be a longer phone call. By the time we hung up, she said, we're going to have three full baskets waiting for you. I'm putting my job on the line. Not only do I know, not know who you are or what you are, but what you're asking for sounds like the right thing to do. She put her job on the line. They sent over Stacy and so many other people to pick everything up, and everybody came to help. In fact, it was the only time that I remember, since I've been on the council, that on that Sunday, all the council members in the San Fernando Valley got on a conference call. We divided up tasks and responsibilities to figure out who needs to do what to get these people shelter and how are we going to move forward. That's only one story of many. Wade came to me with the idea of crowdsourcing and funding a mobile shower. His concept was that we have to restore dignity and trust and opportunity and faith and build relationships with the people that are living on the street. And many of them are service resistant. Many of them are aggressive and combative. Many have drug and alcohol and mental health issues. So what we need to do is go and meet them on a regular basis. And we have to offer them a hot meal, clean clothes, and a fresh shower a shave, an opportunity, a friendship, a hug. And it's going to take that repeatedly, often, regularly, to build that relationship. And he wanted to crowdsource this, so we did that. We partnered, and today we have two mobile showers that go all over the city, start off in the San Fernando Valley. Even Santa Clarita borrows it because of Wade. Those two, by the way, actually are four stalls and offer 105 showers a day. Today, I'm honoring Wade because he's actually moving on to another mission and leaving the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission. In fact, I remember when Marquise Harris Dawson just got elected to the city council, and we started talking about this very issue from day one. By the way, the best seatmate anybody could ask for. We often and regularly, almost daily, talk about what we're doing to try to help a little bit. So I was talking to him about the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission. And the first question he asked me was, where's the San Fernando Valley? No, he didn't say that. <laughs> when, come I, when can I come out and visit this place that you're talking about? There's no place like this on the planet that could be possible with everything you're describing. It doesn't exist. I'm going to come out and see it. So he did. He came out there. We toured it. And then, much to my surprise, I, find, I found him sneaking back and giving tours with other people because we know it could be replicated and duplicated in all of our districts. Wade has made a mark that is unprecedented. He's dedicated his life to helping those in need, those that need service. Prior to the mission, 
He served as an associate director for My Friend's Place, a drop-in center for homeless youth. He co-founded and was the executive director of the Santa Clarita Valley Youth Project and the executive director of the Mentoring Project, a nationwide effort to mentor and assist fatherless young men. All in all, he's dedicated over 26 years of his life to helping those most vulnerable in our society. His time as the director of the rescue mission has been incredible. While communities are often resistant to shelters, the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission is a model because of Wade, because of his staff, because of April, because of so many volunteers and others who have stepped up, but it's all been Wade. His leadership, we've tripled the rescue mission service capacity and proved that we can manage shelters and contribute to help our communities. I can go on and on about the unique partnerships we created. In fact, one of the first Clean Streets, Clean Starts program, where we partnered with Wade, where we can hire the folks who are living on the street to clean up the streets, give them an opportunity, offer shelter, offer substance abuse programs. We've now spin that off. It's become its own nonprofit with its own board of directors and governing board. They've taken over the entire San Fernando Valley. I think they're working in five or six of the council districts now. Neighborhood councils are funding them, and they're helping thousands of people. It's Wade. Helping to get that off the ground and keep it moving. We, um, we just finished our Making Movies That Matter, the largest youth film festival now in California. And, uh, and Wade came to us and said, you know, this is great. You're reaching out to Title I schools, many kids that would never have the opportunity to learn the creative side of filmmaking, to look for and towards a career and what they can be doing in their own communities, making a great income and giving back to society. It would be great if the kids that were living in the shelter, imagine this, children living in a homeless shelter, creating a film on making movies that matter and submitting it for a film festival and winning. They did that. It's Wade. Looking out for partnerships, thinking outside the box. Wade actually, this is really cool. He had a friend, a lifelong friend, who, um, who he knew that made it, successfully made it in society and became very independent very wealthy. So Wade had an idea that if he went to him and said, will you sponsor every single family that moves out of the shelter and gets their own apartment? This is, this is amazing. Every family that moves out of the shelter and gets their own apartment, they move into an empty apartment. They don't have a bed. They don't have furniture. The refrigerator is empty. The cupboards are empty. They don't have towels toiletries? What if you furnished and supplied every single family with a home kit of all of those essential basic needs? Filled the cabinet with food, stocked the cabinets with toiletries and linens, beds for the kids and the families, everything they need. He agreed, and every family now that's moved out of the shelter, Wade has gotten and worked with him to fund and get them started. It's Wade. This guy has really made a mark on LA. He's truly a hero. He's moving on to bigger and better things. I don't know if they're better. I don't know that you can do bigger. Um, but what you've done is you've set a bar. You've set a bar in Los Angeles that I don't know of a single person that's been able to do what you've done to inspire so many, to help so many, to ask for nothing in return, to never want recognition, to go out there unconditionally and help as many people as you possibly can, get on their feet, get off the street, and have a life. And um, he's become a dear friend, even to the point where we've ridden our motorcycles together. Um, every time I see him, it's always about what can we do to get more people help. And um, I, am, I am so grateful um, to you, Wade. So, colleagues, let's give it up for Wade Trimmer, giving him so much to so many for so long.
and, uh, and wishing you the best in the future. As a token of appreciation. Mr. Englander, we also yes. have some members on the queue. I was going to guess that. I wanted to say that um, we don't often all sign every certificate. Uh, and this is special. This is actually signed by each one of us uh, as just a token of appreciation, as a send off to say we love you, God bless you, and we wish you the best. So I know we want to open it up for other members, but I wanted to give him this first. Thank you very much. Mr. Blumenfield? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Mitch, thank you for, for bringing Wade here. And, uh, you know, you certainly said it all. But I, I want to say that everything that Mitch said is true. Uh, I mean, Wade is, is amazing. And I, I have appreciated uh, all that you do and your friendship over these years. The work that you do with the mission is incredible. You've helped my office with coordinating volunteers. You came out for a difficult homeless town hall meeting to help really talk with the community and try to educate people about the various issues. And you, you've just, you've been there. You're one of these people who really, uh, you know, you put your money where your mouth is. I mean, you're, you're there on the front lines. Uh, and you've had really innovative approaches to things. And you have made our community better. And you have, you have touched so many lives. I just, I just wanted to, uh, to, to say a few words to say thank you for that. And, and Mitch, thank you for honoring Wade. All right. Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And thank you, Mr. Englander, for bringing this uh, presentation this morning. Uh, Wade, I just want to personally thank you uh, because in the early days of being on the council and, and you know, Councilman Englander described it correctly, and I was asked to take leadership of the Homelessness and Poverty Committee, and I had a lot of anxiety about that because I felt like homelessness is a really big problem. There weren't really very many solutions, and it just seemed like a big mess, and I was asked to be, being asked to step into the middle of it. And, when I visited your shelter, it was one of the times when I felt like, okay, this is something that can be fixed. This is a social problem that can be solved. Not only did we walk to the shelter, and the shelter is extremely impressive. Uh, four families, the, the big uh, thought that I had walking through that, I, it was like, if my parents had been homeless with us when we were kids, this is a place that they would have wanted or that they would have sought out. And so that's a very high standard for me. But what was as impressive as the shelter was the conversation that we had in the lobby where you and your team went through the names of every homeless person in the vicinity that wasn't staying in the shelter because they were service resistant for one reason or another, mental health or substance abuse or whatever. And you had a plan for how to win them over to get them off the street and into the shelter. And I, I thought that that was um, as important as having the facility because so often many of us want to, you know, throw our, I mean, I have conversations with people and I just say, you know, what are we going to do? This is hopeless. Um, and you all had sat down, made the commitment, and, and in a disciplined way be, to be, begun to figure it out. And so I, I want to personally thank you for that because that's a big thing. Uh, and then almost as big, our first Homeless Connect Day, uh, you drove that shower down to South LA and, and dozens and dozens of people take, took showers that day. And I run into people to this day that haven't forgotten that shower that they got on Avalon and 98th Street from some people who came to them from the San Fernando Valley. So thank you so much. And Wade, I just want to add um, what an amazing human being you are. Um, I still remember the night that the building on Sadequay caught on fire. Um, and Mr. England is right, how everybody came together, um, not only because we thought it was important, but because we knew uh, the need was necessary and that we needed to find resources to help those families. I also want to just kudos to your entire staff. Um, I think they are amazing people doing amazing work. And you had an amazing leader, and I know that, that it's in good hands, but I wish you the best, Wade. You are truly one of the most special people I have ever worked with. Good luck. And I'm going to miss you. I'm gonna, before, before I ask Wade to say a few words, um, Wade had an idea um, some time ago. 
that one of the biggest issues we face with actually building one of these facilities, which we're all struggling with every day, is that nobody wants this in their neighborhood. And so we partnered on a program where on a regular basis we bring, we've hosted every single neighborhood council now in my district at the mission. We've brought in all the chambers of commerce to the mission, CSUN to the mission. We constantly go out there with service clubs, Kiwanas, Rotaries, schools, trying to get as many people in there and so we host meetings there and give them tours and let them meet some of the families so they understand what could, this could very well be right next door to them and they would love it. Uh, Wade set out with that vision when they started on this building where he tapped HGTV, um, who was it? Uh, Emily Henderson. Emily Henderson. Um, and in fact, she was pregnant at the time. And she came in and decorated, and, and you can imagine, you've seen those HGTV extreme makeovers. They did this, she did this for the mission. So you walk in and you think you're in some, some beautiful resort. Um, and we were able to accomplish that. And so now when we bring people there, every person that walks in, I ask them, when we host these meetings, when we had 50 neighborhood councils there, I said by a show of hands, who would allow these, who would vote on one of these if it was on their agenda in the neighborhood council to put this in their community, and I want to see every hand up, and I'm going to hold you accountable to that. And I always do that, and I drill them for it. And it was Wade that said, let's... Let's change the mindset. Let's get them to see what these could be and what they're about. And, um, and everything that Nuri, that you said, she's a remarkable human being that's led a truly, and I'll use your word, amazing staff that uh, all do, do it for the right reasons. And it's because of Wade's leadership. And we're, we're certainly going to miss him at, at the mission. So without further ado, Wade Trimmer. Thank you so much for your very kind and generous remarks this morning. Um, it's a, a little bit uncomfortable for me and very humbling, um, but it's really also a testament to you, uh, to this great city, and to its leaders. It's certainly a testament to my team. Um, the most difficult decision I've made in my career was leaving the mission, and um, and I wouldn't leave unless I knew two things. One, that it was in great hands, or three things. Two, that it was stronger than, than when I found it. And lastly, that wherever I was going, I'd be able to make a bigger impact, and that's the case. Um, I now act as the Executive direct, Director of Housing and Homeless Services with the National Health Foundation, and you'll learn more about that uh, as we go on. Um, I wanna thank each of you for not only your partnerships, but your friendship. Thank you for your encouragement. This work is not for the faint of heart, um, nor is your work. Thank you for your tireless efforts to lead our city. Um, and each of you, I think I've shared sentiments with um, more personally. And as much as I'm grateful for the recognition of my work, I wanna thank you for the recognition of the crisis facing, facing our most vulnerable citizens. Uh, people experiencing homelessness. Just this morning, I was made aware of a woman who passed away earlier this week, and I shared Thanksgiving dinner with her at our Thanksgiving feast last year. Last week ended with the news that another person I knew experiencing homelessness passed away on Friday. This devastating news only strengthens my resolve and tenacity to do all I can to help as many people as I can. But of course, we have to do it together. And the truth is, is that people are dying. Human beings are suffering. And it's our job to alleviate that suffering. I'm confident that we'll see a day where our most vulnerable citizens are housed. We'll see a day where seeing a person who is homeless is an anomaly. It's no longer normal. And I won't give up until I see that day. And I'm asking you, to not give up until you see that day. I want to again thank my team. April Lind is acting as the interim director of the rescue mission. I ask that you give her your as much support, if not more, than you gave me and your encouragement. 
Uh, Melissa Champion is here today who has been such a backbone of our organization and so many others who have been part of our team. And then Kelly Bruno is here today who's the CEO of the National Health Foundation has been doing incredible work for over a decade. So with that, can't thank you enough. Mitch, I wanna thank you for a framed, you said that this is framed, it's beautiful. I'm gonna go hang it on my wall now. Um, and again, thank you for all you do for our great city. Thank you, Mr. Englander. Madam Clerk, we're going to move on to item number nine. I believe there's an amending motion that's been circulated. Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, Madam President. The amending motion was submitted, posted, circulated, and now is before council. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare to vote on that item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Okay, and that, that item's been requested to uh, move forward forthwith on item number nine. Mr. Price, are you ready for your presentation, sir? Thank you, Madam President. Members, uh, today I have not one but two presentations for you. And I promise they're equally uh, important. June, some of you know, already know, is African American Music Appreciation Month. Today, I'm expanding it to include the gamut of African American storytelling, music, and culture. Some of you may have read the Pulitzer Prize winning story by Alice Walker, The Color Purple. Others of you, I have seen the 1986 iconic film starring Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Oprah, Winfrey, Oprah, mm, Oprah Winfrey, directed by Steven Spielberg, with music by Quincy Jones. The Color Purple is an American story for the whole world. It's about life, it's about love, it's about us. You'll always remember Mr. or Suge, old Mr., Nettie, Harpo, Squeak, Sophia, and Seely, and you'll never forget the color purple. But many of you haven't had a chance to see the color purple like this. Let's roll the tape. Members, please join me in welcoming the stars of the live action musical, The Color Purple, now playing at the Hollywood Pantages in Mr. O'Farrell's district uh, through June 17th. Please welcome, let's give them a round, Mr. Gavin Gregory, who plays Mr. <laughs> Ms. Carrie Comprey, who plays Sophia. <laughs> and Ms. Carla Stewart, who plays Suge. Uh, Gavin, would you mind saying two words? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for having us here today. Um, first of all, we just want to give honor to someone who, um, who started this, and that was Miss Alice Walker, who really wrote a, and inspired so many people, um, inspired uh, Steven Spielberg and Quincy Jones to even uh, embark upon making 
an awesome movie that, that's become iconic. And now here we are um, being able to represent this story of, of redemption, of hope, of love, that it, that's going to resonate. I mean, it, it's resonating now. It resonated then, and I'm sure it's going to resonate 100 years from now. And we're just so proud to be a part of it. Um, black music, uh, African-American music ha has been a cornerstone of, uh, of, of American culture, and we just want to thank you for representing this. Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge um, the songwriters um, of, of such great music. Mr. Stephen Bray, who, who, who's done so many wonderful works. Um, I mean, he's worked with artists like Madonna. He does all sorts of um, uh, 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 movie um, uh, scoring and, and whatnot. Miss Brenda Russell, who, um, who who's also um, a, an another amazing singer and songwriter, and also Ali Willis, who has just been inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So, um, on behalf of them and all of the wonderful people that we work with um, on a on, on a daily basis, carrying this this beautiful story of redemption throughout the country, uh, we really, really thank you so much for recognizing us. Thank you. And please accept this as a token of our appreciation uh, for the uh, brilliant work that, you were, that you've done and for the revival that's in place now. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Let's give them a hand again, please. Now, members, for my living legends, not one, but two centurions. I think this is going to be a historic moment in the history of the Los Angeles City Council Chambers. Let's give a warm round of applause for Mrs. Lily Thomas. Come on, Lily. And Mr. Shep Shepard. Mrs. Thomas is the matriarch of the Dolo Kirk Coker uh, Jazz Scholarship Board. Uh, and she will be celebrating her 103rd birthday on September the 3rd, 2018. She's a native of Elizabeth, Louisiana, and has been an active member of the historic Second Baptist Church of Los Angeles in the 9th District. She's been the treasurer of the Charles Dolo Coker uh, Jazz Scholarship Foundation for 35 years. She sang, uh, in, <laughs> she sang in the Cathedral Choir for 25 years. She is a Paris, France trained milliner. Uh, she's received as, uh, she served as a local and national officer of the National Association of Accessory Designers and has many more accolades. Mrs. Thomas, would you care to say a word? The one thing I can say, I'm blessed and I'm very thankful to be here and still be a part of the Dolo Cocos Foundation. All right, thank you. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce uh, drummer Mr. Bresford Shep Shepherd. Shep has performed with some of the best musicians in the world, uh, and he says it's all about love. He's played with Benny Carter, Artie Shaw, Dizzy Gillespie, Lena Horne, Cab Calloway, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and that's only a fraction of the list. Uh, his love for music and for life. Uh, in New York City, uh, in, the, in the 40s, you heard, get Shep, and that was synonymous with getting the best. Uh, at 101 years old, 101, he's a composer, an arranger, a drummer, trombonist, uh, as sometimes a vocalist. He made his way to California in 1964 on the road with the stage production Here's Love uh, in San Francisco. Shep eventually moved to Southern California, uh, and we are blessed with his presence today. And I understand he maintains a, a, an, active, uh, uh, an active record uh, and is going to be performing? Yes, July 13th at Saddleback College and July 18th at Newport Beach. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Chef. Thank you, so much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. 
One more time. It's a pleasure, believe me. Much beyond words. And to be standing here with my lovely wife and a fabulous great-grandson who flew up here from Texas just to be here with his grandpa. Right. <laughs> it's a pleasure indeed. Now listen, I could go on talking and carrying on, but out of my repertoire, All right. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Out of my repertoire, one of the tunes that says most about how I feel regarding all of this and the question that's so often answered or asked is, how you do it, man? Mm -hmm. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. Make that someone the one you sing to. All right. One smile that pleases you. One face that lights when it sees you. One soul you everything to. Now, fame, if you win it, comes and goes in a minute. Where's that good stuff in life? We all cling to love is the answer. Someone to love is the answer. When you find it, build your world around it. Make someone happy, just one someone happy, and you will be happy too. All right. <laughs> That's about the size of it, believe me, what I tell you. Right, 101 you. years young. Let's give it up again for Mrs. Thomas and Mr. Shepard. And let's also give a, a, a word of thanks to Linda Morgan from the Living Legend Foundation for all of her work in making sure that we, that we respect and remember our greats. Mr. Price, what a great presentation. Our legit, Living Legends, let's give them another big round of applause. Phenomenal. <laughs> Mr. Buscaino, if you were old enough and can carry a tune, I would have asked you to uh, accompany them. That was great. Mr. President and colleagues, we are ready to begin our next uh, presentation. I am so pleased to be standing here uh, with our colleague Jose Huizar of the 14th District, uh, with um, uh, Ms. Uh, Rea Oreta representing the Philippines Consul, um, 
Ray Alazo, president of La Face, which is the Los Angeles Filipino Association of City Employees. And I, is Commissioner Joel Jacinto here? I haven't seen him. Okay, maybe he'll, maybe he'll pop in during this. But uh, I want to say to everyone, Mabuhai. Uh, colleagues, on, on June uh, 12th of 2018, the Philippine nation will commemorate the 120th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence from Spain, which led to the establishment of the first constitutional republic in all of Asia. I am particularly proud to be here today as a representative of, of historic Filipino town, a neighborhood that has been home to the Philipp uh, to Filipinos since the 1940s and served as a gateway for many Filipino immigrants in Los Angeles. Um, something that's very exciting, and I'm gonna hold up this sign. Isn't that nice? The Pasig River uh, is a sister river now, and it was commemorated. The Pasig River, which is in Manila, the Philippines, is the most recent sister river, that's not easy to say, sister river, to the Los Angeles River in October of last year, or 2016, a Philippine delegation visited Los Angeles for tours, meetings, the signing of the Sister River Agreement with Commissioner Joel Jacinto. Uh, and I wanna thank Joel, even though he's not able to be here right now, uh, for working on this very important uh, initiative. Uh, Pasig Sister River sign will be on display uh, at our LA River Day exhibit uh, on the bridge uh, of City Hall. Uh, therefore, it is an honor to join you, all of you, uh, in commemorating the 20th, 120th anniversary of the Philippines' in independence. Oh, and there's Joel right now. Joel, big round of applause. Yay, Joel. Joel, I don't know if you heard, but I was just bragging about your work on the Sister River. Uh, so, metaming salamat to all, and uh, now I'd like to uh, present our colleague, Jose Huizar. Well, thank you very much, Mitch. Let's give Mitch a big, Councilmember O'Farrell, a big round of applause. Thank you for your continued support of our Filipino-American community here in Los Angeles. And it's great that we recognize Philippine Independence Day. And, you know, here in the city of Los Angeles, we often talk about how we are a city of immigrants. And indeed, that is true. And we are very proud to host and be part of a family, an international family, where many countries throughout the world say, hey, you know what, our largest population of our own is in Los Angeles. And that's true for the Philippines as well. But what's different is that the Philippines were one of the first founders of the city of Los Angeles. They were, involved, they were here with the Pobladores when we first, uh, the European nations, uh, discovered uh, Los Angeles and made it a city in those colonial times. They were part of the original pobladores. So we talk often about Filipinos in Los Angeles as immigrants, but in fact, they have been here since the very beginning. So thank you for that. And we also want to acknowledge Council General Rea Orita, uh, members of the Filipino Association of City Employees, uh, their president, Rea Lasso, and everyone else who joined us. Uh, I I'm very proud to be part of this celebration uh, each and every year, uh, not only because I have uh, met many great members of the Filipino community here in Los Angeles, but also that I happen to represent one of the largest Filipino communities in Los Angeles, which is in Northeast Los Angeles. We have people like Ruby Devera and others who are very active in our community who contribute each and every day to make Los Angeles better. So on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, we say thank you to the Filipino community. We say congratulations for Philippine Independence Day and let's move forward as one of the most diverse cities in the world to show them how we could all continue to work together and celebrate this Independence Day here in Los Angeles. Congratulations. Uh, and now I would like to actually bring up uh, Ms. Rea uh, Oreta, Office of the Philippine Consul General in Los Angeles. Right here. There you go. Um, good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Philippine Consulate General in Los Angeles and uh, Consul General Adele Cruz, I would like to thank the City Council for this moment and for this recognition. Um, when we look back in history and uh, we see the, the patterns of Filipino migration, 
uh, we could see that uh, Filipino migration is caused mainly primarily by the need to earn a better living and build a better future for our families. And perhaps uh, receiving a recognition like this uh, is the least of the expectations of the early Filipino settlers in the city. But here we are in the 21st century amidst the majestic walls of this uh, chamber uh, being recognized in the city. Um, we've come a long way. And uh, it is really a, a moment of deep pride and honor for us to be here today. And uh, on behalf of the more than 120,000 Filipino Americans in the city, uh, I'm glad to stand here before you today and uh, uh, to recognize their, their contributions, not just to the economy of the city, but also in shaping the social cultural fabric of Los Angeles. And at that, shout out to Council Member Mitchell Farrell and uh, LA City Mayor Eric Garcetti for their continuing work in the Filipino historic town. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. A few acknowledgments before we bring Ray Alazo of La Face up to say a few words. I'd like to acknowledge Ye Coronel of FOSG, which is uh, the Filipino American Service Group, Inc. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Fernandinko. Uh, uh, Q. Ganong of FACLA, Philippine American Community of Los Angeles. Uh, we might have some law enforcement personnel who are here of Filipino heritage. Uh, Darna Umayam, Philippine Independence uh, Coordinating Council of Southern California. Mildred DeYoung, Ms., uh, Miss Filipina International, and the Miss Filipina Participants. And they have an outsized sort of success in the Miss Universe pageant. What is it about Filipino, <laughs> Philippine women? Um, but they, they really represent. Um, all right, now I'd like to, uh, and also we have, who just joined us, uh, Mr. Mike Ng, who is a former uh, College Board of Trustees, LACC, and former assembly member, who you'll hear from in a moment. But next I'd like to bring uh, on Rhea Lazo of La Face. Rhea. Good morning, Honorable Council President and the Council Members and all present here today. I am honored to stand before you as the President of the Los Angeles Filipino Association of City Employees as we celebrate the 120th year of the Philippine independence. As a Filipino organization, La Face mission is not only to assist Filipinos and other city employees with career advancement and employment in civil service, but to assist in the economic, educational, and cultural advancement of Filipinos in the Los Angeles community. In celebrating and commemorating milestones, such as Philippine Independence Day, we hope to share Filipino history, culture, traditions, most especially our food, with younger Filipino Americans and the diverse groups of people that comprise this great city of Los Angeles. Through exposure and social connections, we hope that greater knowledge and appreciation of each other's culture will help build a stronger sense of community. When we meet, talk, get to know each other, share meals together, we're bound to learn of similar experiences and common bounds, even when our viewpoints differ. By appreciating and leveraging our uniqueness in creative ways, we can work together to improve our community. Again, on behalf of La Face and its 2,700 members, we, we thank all council members and specially acknowledge Council Member O'Farrell and Council Member Wizar for your continued support of La Face, the civil servants of the City of Los Angeles and the Filipino community. Mabuhay. Mabuhay. Thank you so much. Uh, before I bring on Mike Ng, I would like to acknowledge members of my staff, Gigi Galias, who is here, who keeps me organized here at the City Hall office, and, and Angelo Yanko, who is legislative uh, lead on so many things that we're working on. Thank you, Angelo. Yes, you. <laughs> All right, now I'd like to bring on someone who has been an advocate and ally to the Filipino community for so many years, most recently of the LACC College Board of Trustees, and previous to that, assembly member, and that is the Honorable Mike Ng. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, Chair um, Mitch Englander, thank you for having me. I love your last name. I wish mine was a little bit longer than yours, but I got the ENG right. 
And um, <clears throat> Council Member O'Farrell, thank you. You've always been at the forefront of recognizing uh, emerging and empowering communities, uh, and with my good friend uh, Huizar as well. I, I'm going to make this very brief. Um, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the person that encouraged me to run for office for the very first time, and that was in the city of Monterey Park, G. Monte Manibag, may his soul rest in peace, was the first Filipino-American ever elected in the United States of America. And he was also um, an Olympian and an attorney and encouraged me to run. In fact, I, he named the street that I live on, that Ju my wife Judy Chu and I live on today, it's called Bataan Place. And many people ask him, why would you name your street that some associated with the death march in the Philippines? He said, because I want to, people to know, I want the world to know that we need to honor the historic long march of many people who died along the way who didn't make it. And just as the Filipino American community stands for you today, many uh, did not live long enough to see the recognition that this chamber has given. And um, today, I also want to acknowledge my former colleagues, uh, Mr. Uh, Cedillo, uh, Mr. Bloomfield, and Mr. Price, and Mr. Koretz, and Mr. Kokorin, who served with me before. And, and, and thank you for empowering emerging communities as well. So thank you so much. This resolution means so much to not just the Filipino-American community, but every community who wanted to say um, uh, to be here today and continue to receive the recognition that all of you have, have given us. Thank you so much. Mabuhay. Salamat. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, so again, uh, we're so, so thrilled and honored to uh, acknowledge this community in the 120th anniversary of uh, Philippine Independence Day, independence from tyranny, independence uh, from injustice, uh, and those struggles continue, and we must always stay united in this current resistance in this country uh, to the similar uh, impulses that we're, we're experiencing, um, because there's room for everyone, no matter who you are or where you're from, for all of our youth and all of their parents who are getting separated at the border, it's very, very important that we stand with one voice for all families, and Los Angeles can do that like no other city. So it's, un, it, it's in, in that spirit that we congratulate you on the 120th anniversary of Philippine Independence Day. We do have one council member on the queue as well. Okay. And uh, Mr. Cedillo. And Mr. O'Farrell. I, I want to get a picture of the two of you because the tie and the dress match perfectly right there. I just, I just want to point that out. Mr. Cedillo, the, the floor is yours. I want to give, oh, uh, give him a time give him a to take a picture. You uh, got it. You got it. Mr. Ng, so you know while you're taking the picture, um, with Englander, they always ask me the spelling. How do you spell Englander? Is it with an I or an E? So I always, I always tell them it's England with an E-R, and they still ask, is it an I or an E? Mr. Cedillo. Yes. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues for, uh, for bringing this to our attention. Obviously, a very significant event in, in the Western Hemisphere as a senator and as assembly member, I had the privilege of sharing that same area, representing that area. As a, um, the ties of our communities are rich and deep, and I wanted to acknowledge that. I wanted to acknowledge the staff that served my office and served our community over the years, and it's been a, a quite robust staff. Right now, I have four Filipinos working for me in my office. Some people refer to it as a Filipinos working center. Um, so let me acknowledge Mally Lohman, who's been with me since the first day I was elected. Tony Ricasa, who's uh, also a return to my office after many years of working for me. J. 
Gerald Gubatan. And he's uh, uh, out ill today, but Eduardo Hewitt is also uh, part of our staff, and we're very pleased uh, to have him with us. Uh, I want to acknowledge a few others who have worked for me. Uh, Marissa Abrahano, who's now a professor at the uh, University of San Diego. Uh, Lindsay Hervaccio. Um, and our, our also our intern, Natalie Ricasa Vagaporo. And then finally note that with the switch staff, we, our office was the first office in the nation to honor the Filipino World War II veterans and to make sure that they and their families were compensated for their commitment and their patriotism to our nation. And so I wanted to take a, a moment to do that. And finally, also welcome to uh, this chambers, uh, a great leader, uh, not just for the Filipinos or for the Asian American community, but a great leader uh, in our state for all people, for civil rights and human rights, uh, Miguel uh, Miking. So thank you for uh, being with us. <laughs> Miguelito. <Ng. laughs> so, so thank you. And Ms. President, yes. I would be remiss if I didn't introduce uh, my plan deputy planning director, Kevin Ucubillo, with a cool haircut. Thank you, Kevin, for all the work you do. <laughs> Mr. Roof. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Councilmember O'Farrell and Councilmember Huizar for bringing this. And, and thank you, Councilmember Cedillo. I remember the, uh, your office from way back with Mel and Tony and the first elected official I ever met when you represented not just Filipino, historic Filipino town, but Koreatown and Chinatown and all the uh, Asian American neighborhoods. Um, you were the first elected official I ever met. You were the first office I ever worked in. And, um, and to the Filipino American community, um, happy Independence Day. Um, the Filipino community um, has been, is the, is the most, po most populous uh, of the Asian American communities in Los Angeles. And um, it has been a pillar in our community. Um, so, and has set the stage and set the way for many of the future Asian American immigrants who did come into this, come into this area. So I really thank you for your friendship. I really thank you for all your support, um, whether it's the veterans or whether it's uh, um, doing festivals. And I know um, um, I had the fortunate opportunity to go to Councilman Huizar's district last year when the, when the, when the Filipino heritage uh, ceremony was temporarily moved for, for, for um, one year from CD13 to CD14. Uh, but. Um, what I told the Filipino people is, it's not just about historic Filipino town. It is wherever Filipino Americans gather, it's Filipino town. So um, thank you for being part of the rich diversity of Los Angeles, and happy Independence Day. All right, with that, uh, that closes the presentation. And again, it, we're just so honored to be able to bring all of you together today and celebrate the 120th anniversary of this very, very historic day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think forever, until the end of the day at least, I'll be known as Ng, so we'll go with that. Um, uh, we have, uh, what do we have left on the web? Presentations, I believe that concludes the presentations. We'll go, start going into public comment in a moment.
Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go into multiple speaker items. So we'll start with items 1, 13, and 14. Mr. Herman. For the record, my name is Mr. Hernandez. But hearing on protests and appeals of objections for confirmation of lien nuisance, we all recognize who current price is in CD9 at 216 East 64th Street. He's going to waive the lien to prevent punitive damages harm for unconstitutional liens against this property. Item 170160S for Sucker 728. And then current price again at 715 East Manchester Avenue. I'm pretty sure Mr. Price will waive the lien here as well. Now, in regards to Mr. Dawson, he really has no sympathy for his, his council district. As you see, he has a 3,500.24 cents lien against South Harvard Boulevard, let me give you the address, 9206 South Harvard Boulevard. In addition to that, in all protests against liens, I demand that you waive all liens as of today. I am here to favor the plaintiffs in which you caused bodily injury and mental health due to the sacrifice of what you've done. As you see, I too have just came back from the doctor. Then I go into the next item, which I signed up in the very back. By the way, why are we not answering to item number nine? Anyways, let's look at item number 13. In CD2, 115953, bar license number of Paul Martin Krikorian, dealing with amending action to correct the address of the day laborer site such as myself. I'm unemployed, but I'm here working. How can that be? Because I'm here working. So the Department of General Services has negotiated under LLC that homeless service in the future and that of the lease include a provision that does not allow to lease or sublease any property to the homeless. As you see, we're having problems with housing. But yet, during the presentation, if you go back and roll the tape, there was so much gratitude and talk about helping homeless people. Then finally, on maps, dealing with Roo, Roo, and his participation and, part and participation, we have to understand that city engineer reports don't outline the details. They use discriminatory bias prejudice against people of color because Koreans hate Americans. As for my general public comment, as you all well know, that I, Armando Herman for the record, was dismissed under 22 seconds for public comment. Maybe because the chair was not willing to let me say thank you, Ms. Martinez, for cleaning up the valley. They thought I was going to say something different. That's censorship, that's discrimination. So as long as you're in America and you vote for Mr. John Cox, I would rather vote for a Republican, Mr. John Cox, because my cocksucking governor is going to do better for California. Vote for Cox, support Cox, C-O-X, not like the city of Los Angeles, C-O-C-K, cocksuckers. And let's win, win, win. Remove the LGBT queer from, from San Francisco 
And as I said under 42 SC, fuck Mitchell Englander. Thank you, Armando. All right, Eric, Previn. Eric, come on up. You are on 1, 13, and 14. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. 1, 13, 14, and 9, because you have a 9A, which was a substantial change, correct? Mr. President, that item has already been voted on. Right, so could you reconsider? Can you the... stay on the items, please, or are you going to forfeit your time? I'm not going to tell you the rules again. You're here every single day. We tell you You're the rules all the time. The time. You're always sir. off subject. Yeah. Item number so one you know the is rules. the lien item, and we don't have any from 12, but we do have some from uh, District 6, which is... Uh, uh, Martinez, uh, eight, which was Harris Dawson, who has a 35. He broke the record today for the highest lien against his uh, constituents. But uh, I want to just give a little acknowledgement to Mr. Price and also to Mr. Weezar, who are experiencing some very big and robust uh, development down in their areas. They also have liens on their property, trying to clean up uh, the neighborhood. But what they were tabulating, we're not 100% sure. We're also looking for who has the largest tax breaks to hoteliers in the district. Now, we feel that it's probably Weezar, but Mr. Price has made some, some adequate moves in that category, and we're looking forward to an accurate tabulation of who is going to win that contest, which we're, we're bringing forward very, very soon. And speaking of uh, transit occupancy tax waivers, I just want to give a shout out to the group that's working without an agendized item, but looking forward to, at some point, slapping on the table uh, some kind of a settlement for RE. You're not on the subject matter. No, no, sir. It's about the liens. Are we not doing? No, liens you're tonight? not talking. You're talking about we something waive completely the, different we, than right, the sir, specific I'm on the liens. waiving of the liens, buddy. I don't want to so, argue with you right now. Are you going to let me speak on item number two? I'm just correcting, so you know the rules. I appreciate you clearly that. Clearly, forget. You got to speak All right, specifically well then let's talk to about what's the on the agenda. Let's talk about the council elections because I think that's certainly fair game. What we're doing is we are moving it over to the clerk, and we're going to skip a year to year three. Mr. For the President, terms. he's not on agenda. Okay, his item. time is up. He's disrupting this no, meeting. It's item no, you're two. disrupting the meeting. I'm so, not disrupting the meeting. Yeah, you're disrupting the meeting. So please have a seat. It's general public. It's comments. disrupting. Oh, can you do, can you please uh, escort Mr. Herman out of the room? Armando, you're out. Armando, you're out. Sergeants, please uh, escort him out. Mr. Previn, have a seat. Have a seat. You're disrupting this meeting, or you can leave too. If you're not going to follow the agenda items, and you're constantly reminded it's a disruption, and you know the rules. So, Mr. Previn, if you're not going to have a seat, you're disrupting I would like the to meeting. Make a general public comment. All right, start your general public comment right now. Start its general public comment. Uh, I can't. It's, you have to wait, sir. I can't speak when he's. Oh, I can hear you fine. Go ahead. Oh, you can hear me fine. It's a nice, nice. Okay, keep. You're eating my time. Okay. Inappropriate conduct. Okay. The, the, what I was just speaking about is that there is a plan underfoot to waive a bunch of assessments on a hotelier, sportsman's lodge, REWLLC, but we don't have any information. So I was discussing that with the city attorney's office who decided not to show. He's got his uh, stand-in today. But Mr. Fauble needs to make clear what the terms of the deal. If, we, if he owes... Five million, and we're going to wave it down to one million. Or if he owes one million, we're going to wave it down to people need to know because we're not waving so much for the small players, but the big players who are contributing, sir, including to you and your supervisor, Cam, including to I can go around the room. A lot of the people in this room received contributions from this chap and his LLC and the various. Right, your time iterations is up. Thank you very that. much. The next speaker, please. Sean. Hey, Sean, how are you? Good morning. Uh, good. What items? You're on uh, items 1, 13, and then general public comment. 1 and 13. Yeah. Item 13 is road maps. Uh, item 1 is, road, is something else. General public comment. Uh, about 24 days from Sunday, my new pastor's coming to St. Charles Barmeo. He starts July 1st. He moves in June 25th. I'd like to give a shout out to my graduation class of 1978, 40th anniversary, 1978 at Salvin School. I want to say, hey, I miss you. Uh, how's everything going? Thanks. All right. Thank you, Sean. Walsh, come on up.
1, 13, and 14. 1, 13, and 14. Okay, uh, building and safety. Uh, you actually do a good job on building and safety. Uh, number 13, this is uh, operations of the Day Labor Center uh, site uh, on Sherman Way. You're doing a fairly good job there, except the homeless is increasing by incredibly uh, incredible amounts. Uh, it is almost water and power, site for day labor center uh, and homeless service in the future. <clears throat> All you do is build homeless centers and uh, not use them. Uh, one, 13, uh, 14. All these maps. Watch out for these maps. They, they, they change the maps and all of a sudden your neighborhood, especially black neighborhoods, they're gonna get rid of all the blacks in South LA and move in Jews, okay, and Asians. And remember, the future is not Jewish. The future is- Okay, Yale. you're not on your subject at all. Okay. So start as one minute for general public comment. One minute for general public comment. I'm telling you right now that the Antonio Villaraigosa, we said we would beat his ass. We beat his ass. And finally, the first story in the LA Times, which actually tells you the truth about Antonio yesterday. And Herb Wesson was his chairman. That's why you don't see his black ass around here now. Of course, he sold it to, the, to a Mexican who fucked him in the ass. All right. The mayor, you know what? Uh, no, there's nothing Stick wrong to with items under the subject matter of the purview of this. Can I say fuck, fuck somebody in the ass? Can I say that? If you're not speaking to items under the purview of this committee, uh, you're no, done. No, no, no. I'm on public comment. General. Doesn't public matter. Comment. It's not about you anything. Piece of general public. Shit. Com okay, you're you done. Piece Your time of is up. Shit. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Have a seat. Thank you uh, once again for being so articulate. Wayne. Wayne. Same items, Wayne. Fuck them in the ass. <laughs> so we get to these things. We have a lean number one. It's disgusting. From one e. Making liens on North Kester Avenue. We talked about this the other day. 1655 fucking dollars. Now, see, I wore my denim patch, and she wears her denim patch, terrorizing this poor fucking homeowner, putting this woman out in the street, North Kester Avenue. Rape is a fucking lean. We don't want the lean. Get rid of that lean bitch. We do not want this fucking lean anymore. We are tired. We also asked Mr. Price to waive his two liens. And what did he say? He told us to talk to somebody named Lynn Price. And I went there, and I cannot find her in the office, but we will go to the New Jersey office and find her there. Waive the fucking liens now. Look at the numbers. This fucking agenda. 13. To expand the labor shortage facility in CD2. <laughs> yes, even though I'm a pig, that filthy fucking Krakorian is doing it again in North Hollywood. He's pushing his slaves from Studio City to fucking North Korea. North Korea, North Hollywood, the same goddamn fucking thing. You go over to North Hollywood, it's a goddamn filthy shithole over there. Junk Donald Trump called North Hollywood the new North Korea, the new shithole of the United States. And Mr. fucking Kokorian, that son of a bitch, lets this happen every day. Why do I have to Mr. go to Walsh, the gay labor side? Yes. Well, Mr. Walsh was saying about the cocksucking. So let's get back. Let's get back. Number 14, final maps. Fuck you and your final maps. The rapist David Rue continues. Okay, you're not on the subject matter. Start as one minute for general public comment. 
I was on Mr. City Attorney, Madam City Attorney. One minute for general public comment. I did not get a warning before. So now we get to the good news. I have done it again. I have delivered you from another city son of a bitch like Mitchell Englander, this time Antonio Villaricosa. I fought and I won. Third fucking place behind an unknown Republican. I did it again. Let that be a lesson to all of you in those chairs. I can make your political career or I can fucking destroy it. Now what you might not know is why did Gil Cedillo re-win his election? Because I helped him win. Because if I had not helped him win, the bicycle cocksucker would be in his chair. But the bicycle man lied. And finally, Jim Burkhart, that fat fuck working for Paul Koretz, was fired by Antonio Villarigosa before the election. We win again. Time is up. All right. Antonio? Minute for item 13. We say hell no. I admonish you that many of these day workers are criminals in their own country. They are, they are culeros y malandros and the dismadrosos. They are treacherous, filthy, conniving pigs and deceitful. Most are drug dealers and thieves and brutes. You are endangering your lives if you hire any of these day workers because a multitude of them a run with many underground criminal organizations. You are setting up yourselves for danger. Please don't hire them. Please don't trust them, but deport them, deport them, deport them. And we absolutely love ICE. And this is one of the main reasons that um, Donald Trump is trying to set up a new president, and that is to protect the Americans from hiring these criminal wetbacks who are asking for jobs, and what they're trying to do is win your trust and your confidence and gain access to your homes and then unlock the doors or the windows without your knowledge and then break into your homes at night, ransack your homes, ransack your vehicles and destroy your lives, totally uproot your lives. Thank you very much. And having said that, the night before, in the early hours of June the 7th, I went to the LAPD headquarters to file a theft report with Sergeant Female Fuentes and Male Officer Munez and Female Officer uh, Gutierrez because a young Latino homeless gangbanger and who was a drunk, um, you could smell it on his breath, this was after midnight. I wanted to get rid of him without any physical confrontations because he was verbal and obnoxious. This was while I was setting up my tent on, the, on Spring Street um, as I am homeless as well. I decided to offer him my sleeping bag that was just uh, that was just Lysol and wash so he could get some sleep but he wanted to sleep in my tent I said hell no you get the sleeping bag and hasta la vista cabron so well he looked up and um, he took the sleeping bag and along with my uh, my sleeping bag he took my purse he took my he took my purse he took my fucking purse he took my money my ids and everything in it um and i was so upset and um that's thank why you very much I so filed next a police speaker report. Thank i think you very that much. uh concludes we have one more oh, oh lauren latrell Comment on number one and then general. Hello? One and 13 and 14. And then a, I don't need 13 or 14. Just, just general public comment? Okay, one minute yeah. for general public comment. One in general. Uh, my name is Lauren Littrell and I'm with, um, or I live in uh, District 12 and I'm getting used to speaking before you. It's really intimidating. I can't imagine how hard it is being in your spot with all that responsibility. Uh, one of the things that I startled me a little bit was I didn't see notice of, uh, of the fact that a lien would be put on these people's houses. And I feel that that's a bit unfair. They going into it, you know, thinking it's a thousand dollar fine or, or whatever is much different than, um, than having your whole house taken away from you. And they were stale, like, 2014 and 2015 violations, so I don't understand why current actions are being taken for stuff that's really, you know, years ago. They should have taken care of it then. 
right now it's almost like a sneak attack to make them. All right, for the general. Thank you very much. No, that was for the general public comment. That's what you said you wanted, right? Oh, well, so you were speaking specifically on that one item on the liens. Okay, we'll go ahead and give you a minute for general public comment. Um, I just want to say a poem, and it's called Ba Ba. I'm sorry, it's called Resources. Ba Ba. Hey there, sheep. For me, so have you. It's got to be only items pertaining to. General? General has to be items pertaining to this poem? body, to, to this elected body, under our purview. Not reading poetry, or we appreciate it, but it's items that are specifically under our purview only. I didn't know that. Do you have a code? Sorry? Is there a code to back yeah, that yeah, up? Yeah, it's all written. It's all written Where? in the council Can rules. I look at it's it? all posted in the back as well. Yeah, it's posted on every agenda, it's all the rules. It's posted in the back? Uh, yeah, you can pull up the council rules. Where? Um, the city attorney can, uh, we'll have somebody speak to you on the side. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, we can go ahead and vote on the remaining items, please. Mr. President. The sergeant will fill you in. Okay. Item number 1A, there is uh, the Department of Building and Safety request for item number 1A to reduce the lien to $631.06 uh, due to partial payments, reduce item 1B to $623.28 also due to partial payment, C reduced to $179.06, E reduced to $955.25 and to continue all four liens to July 3rd, 2018, sir. And the rest of the items, that would be 1D, 13, 14A and B, the council can vote on, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse me for one second. Sir, at the podium, did you, did you have your, we're good? Okay. 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 Um, so we'll go ahead and vote on those items. Open the roll. Close the roll. And tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. And um, any other items? No, sir. Okay. We do have uh, Ryan for general public comment for one minute. Thank you. My name is Ryan Reza Farsai. My lifelong address is 2714 Portland Street. I'm a member of Beta Theta Pi. My president was Dr. Stephen Sample. I'm here to step up for Dr. Max Nikias. I want to thank the opportunity to speak this Friday morning. Dr. Max Nikias served as the 11th president of the University of Southern California, and he just stepped down. I want to thank him. I'm a Trojan. He did a wonderful job. I'm, it's unfortunate our recent Board of Trustees president, who's a builder, doesn't like the student campus or whatever. Maybe he's going to a different direction. I also want to invite the kid from Akron, after he loses to the Warriors, to come join the Lakers. We need a, we need a, we need a mentor for our young Dookie, the Blue Devil. He's, right, sir, he's sir, uh, got a seven-foot wingspan, sir, and sir, he needs gotta, a mentor. You've got to speak to only items under our purview. Yes, sir. I am the spirit of Dr. Buss. We need thank you the very from much. Afghan. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Your time is up. Okay, we'll go ahead and recess and go into the special meeting. Uh, Mr. President, I'll call the roll. Uh, that is Bloomingfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Sedil, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Weizar, Coretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 13. 13 members present in a quorum, Mr. President. Items 16 through 19 are items for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration, okay, sir. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, open those for consideration. Open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, then those items are before us. We have cards on all those items? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring up the cards now. Okay, 16 through, 16 through uh, 19, we're going to take them all at once. Lauren, again, if you want to come on up. You got to, you're good? Okay. 
Sean? Yeah, item 16, I am four. Item 19, I'm four too. Okay, thank you very much. Antonia? Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is still not clear here, and it's ambiguous and it's vague, you hear are, you are going to finance the construction of a 50-unit multifamily housing project. And again, who are the people that are housed? Who are, who are the people that are homeless? They are white, African-American, and um, law-abiding military veterans. Now, who are the ones that are subsidized and housed? The fucking wetbacks and the fucking gangbangers. Then the communities go down, and you wonder why we're in shambles and a shithole and a cesspool? God almighty, we're spending so much money, $17,500,000 to finance this shit so we can house these goddamn wetbacks and gangbangers who are nothing more than a bunch of goddamn pigs, thieves, and a bunch of fucking losers. And all they do is they bring down the communities, they bring down the environment, they bring down the city, and then they create a whole, a whole multitude of crimes that nothing ever gets resolved. So what we're doing is we're compounding the problems. Again, we are bringing in more wetbacks and gangbangers, more wetbacks and gangbangers, and we're moving out all the middle class families out to the streets. The blacks are out in the street, the legal, the beautiful military veterans are out in the street, and the whites are on the street, and the le good law-abiding citizens, Mexicans, are on the street. But who, who is going to protect those? We're just pushing them down further down south of the border. And we're bringing in more goddamn wetbacks and gangbangers. And again, the communities and the cities are going down and down. We got graffitis, we got vandalism, and we got runaway theft, home invasion robberies. Goddamn, they're all housed and they're still robbing from the homeless on the fucking Antonio, street. Okay. Cut her mic. Goddamn, how is that possible? Okay, your you time is your up. Money, man. Your time is up. God Thank you very Donald much. Trump and God bless America. So, Mr. President, item yeah. 19, the amendment f for. Um, yeah, that was a little, been... little extra. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, item 19, there is an amendment on item 19. The amendment has been posted, circulated, and is now before council, sir. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, at this Mr. moment... Mr. Walsh, you're disrupting this meeting again. So it's another warning, so you're asked to leave. Goodbye, Mr. Walsh. Uh, Sergeants, Mr. please escort him out. Can't stand up and yell in the meetings. You know that. We've already given several warnings during these meetings, so you're out. Mr. Walsh, you're continuing to disrupt this meeting if you don't leave. Eric Previn, come on up. Eric, you're on 16 and 17. Thanks. It's Eric Previn from uh, the CD2 <coughs> area and the 3rd District uh, Supervisorial District. Uh, you got your high road training program. Now, sir, high road training refers to taking the high road, uh, which being fair, equitable, reasonable. Now, the low road training program is working great down here. You got your ad hoc violations going on all over the place. And I want to I want to give kudos to the to the temporary acting president for 
really pressing the low road approach. It's going, it's going very, very well from that perspective. From the perspective of uh, high road partnership, where we allow the public to speak on, for example, item 9 and 9A, where you amended from 348,000 down to 220,000, the little cha-ching for outreach at the neighborhood council level to the clerk, it's a big red flag because we ask the clerk who's charged with curing and correcting and reconsidering these items on the Mr. President, agenda. the speaker is not on the agenda. Yeah, item. once again, not on the agenda. So, you know what? Um, high road partnership, That's your time. Buddy. High road partnership. Your Sit time's down. up. Sit down, sir. Your time's up. Okay, so next speaker, please. Actually, I believe we can actually go ahead and then vote on this item then. Uh, the Mr. Items. President, that would be 16 through 18. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the roll on those items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Those are approved. And uh, item 19 as amended, sir? Yes, we'll go ahead and open the roll on that. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, that is approved. Uh, Mr. President, there is a request for urgent forthwith for 16, 18, and 19, and that requires a, another vote, sir. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the roll for the ur urgent forthwith. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That's approved. Uh, Mr. President, would the council like to go into special meeting number two, sir? Yes, please. Um, I will call the roll. Blumenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Weezer, Coretz, Krikoria, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson. 13 members, uh, President of Quorum, Mr. President. Item number 20 is an item for which public hearing has not been held. 20, uh, 10 votes are required for consideration, sir. Okay, we'll open the roll for consideration. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, next items, please. Oh, actually, we've got to go ahead and take those items now. So we have cards on those items. Um, yes, okay, so Antonia. And as you're making your way up here, Antonia, on this item, I'm going to tell you if you yell again into the mic because our interpreters are complaining, then we're going to cut your time. So you can speak, but don't yell. So in other words, we have to be robotic to please Mitchell Englander, is that what you're saying? We have to. Be, you're not we, on topic, and you're going to cut your time if you're not on topic. We are regulated in speech. Whatever you say. Okay, your or time you, is up. You're now whatever. disrupting this meeting. Have a seat. Have a seat. You're disrupting this meeting. Okay, sergeants, please escort her out for continuing to disrupt this meeting. Thank you. Sergeant, she may need some help out. You're out. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Eric, come on up. She's continuing to disrupt this meeting. Thank you. It's Eric Previn from CD2, and these comments are constitutionally protected, so any interruptions will be treated. Okay, you're not speaking on the actual subject item matter. Item 20 is the item before us today, sir. It's an item at 2600 South Hoover Street. And it's a TEFRA hearing. Now, what TEFRA hearings are, sir, as you know, it's where the federal government pays attention to the way the local actors are behaving. And when we see violations or when we see problems, we act strongly sometimes. Sometimes we, you know, put in someone like Eileen Decker who worked for the mayor and nothing happens. But we're working on those transitions to hold accountable the folks who are having the hearings, holding the hearings, and behaving in the ways that you're behaving. You know, in my opinion, you've really crossed the line. We need to look into a 5250, Buscaino. Do you know what a 5250 is for? Okay, for you're not chair? on the subject matter. Yeah, you've we'll got look to look up, on sir. the subject matter. 5250 for Englander. Thank you. Sean. I'm against this. I am. Thanks. Thank you very much. Lauren. Okay, pass. Is there a Sassonian here to speak? No? Okay. All right, so, um, Wayne, you're continuing to disrupt this meeting. So, this is your third warning now, so now we're asking you to leave. So, have a nice weekend, Wayne. You know, you're disrupting this meeting. Do not walk up to the podium. You're disrupting the meeting. Sergeants, if you can please escort him out. Please escort him out. Thank you very much. You're gone. You're continuing to disrupt this meeting, Wayne. Sergeants, please escort him out immediately.
Okay, so we have a uh, last. We can go ahead and vote on that item. You're continuing to disrupt this meeting, Wayne. Continuing to disrupt this meeting. Okay. Continuing to disrupt this meeting as you're making your way out. All right, so we'll go ahead and take up the, uh, that, that item now. Let's go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That's approved, so we can convene uh, uh, the Mr. special. Mr. President, there's a request for item 20 to go urgent forthwith. Okay, that we'll go ahead and the open vote. the roll for the urgent forthwith request. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That's approved. Now we can adjourn, adjourn. the yes. special meetings and reconvene the general meeting. We have one more card or two more cards for general public comment. Timothy Owens. Uh, good morning. My name is Timothy Owens. I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I volunteer. I teach homeless people and veterans how to use computers. Mayor Garcetti wants to end homelessness, but there's one problem. There's no employment skills training available on the Internet. Workforce Development Department, Employment Development Department, LA Housing Authority, they all provide wonderful job training centers, but there's no training on the Internet that's available. Homeless people and families, they live in their cars, their RVs, shelters, motels, and apartments. They have access to the internet, but many times they cannot get to the job training centers. These families need to know how to create a resume, how to go online, and how to job search and apply for a job online. My company offers this training, jobtraininginthecloud.com. Uh, City Council, I just ask you to please fund this training so that it's free access to all the residents of Los Angeles. We can beat homelessness and I certainly appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks for your service to the country. Jacqueline Richardson. This is not nice. I don't believe you're at fault uh, originally for those liens on people's houses, but I do believe big money, big time big money is in back of this. And they're way down the road so that you can't see them. They got guns on you, guns that you can't see. I say this because uh, these are thefts, but they're thefts done under the color of the law. Uh, if that's because uh, they, the people do get proofs of service, but some of these people, I believe, who get these letters can't read, or they believe everything's okay. The rent is paid, the house note is paid, insurance is paid, property taxes are paid, and they may toss that away. What is this? What is this junk? They may not know what it is, so they don't look at it clearly. I believe big time, big money is way in the back of that someplace and uh, have doing this under the cut of the law so they can make big time, big time money. That's my belief of that. Great, thank you very much. That concludes the general public comment. I believe we have motions for posting and referral. Thank you very much. Do we have announcements? Looking to my right, seeing none. Looking to my left, seeing none. Everybody can please rise for adjourning motions. Looking to Mr. Rue's side of the horseshoe. We have adjourning motions, colleagues, seeing none. Looking to my left, seeing none. I do have one adjourning motion. Colleagues, I ask that uh, with great sorrow today that we adjourn in the memory of a dear friend, a friend of our office, a friend of the community, and somebody who's done a lot, uh, Steve Harris, who's a loving husband to his wife, Susan, for 52 years, father of two children, uh, Michael and Bethany, and he loved his family as they loved him in return. Steve is also a community leader. leader. He served as the president of the Friends of Oak Ridge, the participant in numerous civic organizations such as the Mount, Mountains Restorations Trust, the Mountain Lion Conservancy and the Land Trust Alliance, and many others. His actions, participation show a deep and abiding belief in the democratic experiment and the idea that we all have a responsibility to contribute to the health 
of our communities, and the protection of our planet. Memorial service is planned for the morning of June 24th at 10 a.m. at Mount Sinai Memorial Park and Cemetery. Um, I'd like to offer my personal condolences to Steve's family and um, let them know that his contributions to our community have been vast. Uh, he has been a true leader where he got on a board or any organization, he quickly became the lead and the go-to person to get anything done. He was certainly <laughs> always opinionated and um, thought outside the box and was a visionary. Uh, and because of him, we are certainly better off today, and he will forever be remembered. May Steve Harris rest in peace. Thank you. I believe that concludes this council meeting. We are adjourned. Have a great weekend and be safe. Thank you.